Kenya, where the outcome of the attack at the Dursat office and hotel complex last week could have been much more worse were it not for the swift and calculated response by security forces in Nairobi, says the international criminal police organization known as Interpol. The organization's executive director for police services, Tim Morris, has told the BBC that intelligence sharing between countries needs to improve to prevent further attacks. 21 people were killed when Al-Shabaab gunmen attacked the building there. Uh, well, he's been speaking to the BBC's senior Africa correspondent, Ansoy. It's one of the largest crime scenes uh, that I've witnessed in a considerable while. It shows how complex uh, the operation was for the Kenyan police. It also shows the ferocity of the engagement between the security forces and the terrorists. Uh, the damage is quite substantial and you can see what an impressive job the Kenyan forces did. Whilst there was a, a terrible loss of life, uh, I think the potential could have been much greater had it not been handled in the manner it was by the Kenyan police. Well, they have been praised, as you have just uh, done, but then people are asking, could this have been averted? Well, that's always the case, I, I think, after a terrorist incident. We need to go back in a sober way and look at were there early indications, what could have been done, how can we improve our collective response? So we're looking at practical measures. How can national police forces, how can the region work together, remove obstacles that prevent the more rapid sharing of information and threat intelligence? And you play an important role in that because the nature of attacks of this nature is that they are transnational and that is where you come in. Um, well, what's your comment on the kind of relationship and the you know, intelligence sharing you have with member countries like Kenya? Yeah. Well, Kenya, we have a very good relationship. We've got uh, nine officers on the ground, experts in digital forensics, crime scene management, explosives, ballistics. And this team is, is working hand in glove with the Kenyan police to make sure that the perpetrators are identified, the masterminds and financiers behind such attacks are identified. And I think we're making really good progress together. And what about in terms of prevention of attacks of this nature? The very transnational nature of this threat that you've mentioned is a very real issue. So what can we do to strengthen border controls to make sure that if a person of interest does cross a border, for instance, from Somalia into Kenya, do we know who's crossing, why they're coming across? Are they known to authorities and a potential terrorist threat? And I think there are many practical measures that we can work with all the governments in the region on to strengthen this. And in the case where they are known to the authorities, and in this case, we understand one of the gunmen even had a bounty on his head. He was on the wanted list, yeah. but he's been able during that time to travel to Somalia, to Tanzania, and here to Kenya to execute this attack. How come we end up with lapses like these for people who are known to be dangerous? It's a huge border between uh, Kenya and Somalia, as you're well aware, and so there's both official transit points and unofficial transit points. So it's a huge issue, I think, for the Kenyan and Somali authorities to build an effective border. Uh, that's uh, Tim Morris, the uh, Interpol's executive director for police services, speaking about how countries need to be sharing information to prevent further attacks. And he was referencing their Kenya's attack on the Tulsa office and hotel complex, which took place last week, and 21 people were killed. He was talking to the BBC's Ansoy.